Hey, how's it going? This is Hellbent, and welcome to Auto Hotkey Logic Tutorial Number Three. In this one, we're going to be looking at the nested loops. Uh, this tutorial was selected by you, the viewer, in a poll that I held. I am currently holding another poll right now. Uh, you can find the poll and submit your own vote on what you would like to see covered next by selecting any of the playlists for Auto Hotkey that I've created. The first video is going to be the current poll that I'm holding. Uh, there is no set date on when I'll be closing the draw on the next poll, but uh, probably once a month, once or every two months or so, I'll uh, put it, close the poll, do the tutorial, and post a new poll for the next tutorial. Um, let's see. So this one we're going to be talking about nested loops. Uh, the first thing we'll cover is what a nested loop is. So a nested loop is just a loop that is inside of another loop. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's just jump into some basics for declaring a loop or creating a loop. So if we just type in the word loop with nothing following it, and then open and close French brace. What we have here is an infinite loop. So this loop will continue running until some condition that we say inside of it. So we can say if so and so is that, then we're going to exit out of it. Or the person can exit, it, close the script manually. So this is our infinite loop. It'll run forever. Next, what we'll have is a loop for a certain amount of times so this is this loop here it'll run through 10 times and then it'll exit out of the loop on its own and once again inside of this loop we can set up conditions that if that condition is met we can prematurely exit out of our loop and last is using a variable to determine the number of loops so let's go ahead and create a dummy variable so I'm going to call my variable var and I'm going to set it to equal 10. So just like before, we had 10 loops. This time we're going to have 10 again. Now, in order to use a variable when we're in our loop here, what we need to do is, because it's not expecting an expression, what we need to do is take our variable and wrap it in percent marks and then type in the name of our variable. If we don't do this, it's not going to work. Okay, uh, one of the advantages of using a variable for a set amount of <clears throat> times it's going to run through a loop is that we can assign this variable a value through the course of our script doing its normal thing. So if certain things happen within the script, it can change the value of that var variable so that way it loops only the appropriate amount of time. So for example, if we have an array, we can say that the last we can count the number of elements that are in that array and then we can loop that or we can loop that through that array that proper number of times okay so that's our simple loops and how we determine how many times it's going to run through the loop now let's go through the first example of a nested loop. So for this example what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two variables one is going to represent the number of times our outer loop runs and then the second variable is going to represent how many times our inner loop runs. So I'm going to call my first variable i and this is going to represent our outer loop and I'm going to set its starting state to 0 and then j which is going to be our inner loop and I'm going to set its value to 0. Next I'm going to have a loop that runs through 10 times and then inside of that loop, I'm going to have another loop that also runs 10 times. On this inner loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that variable j, which is our representation of the inner loop or how many times it runs through, is I'm going to take that j variable and I'm going to add 1 to its value. Just, as soon as it's done running through that 10 times, it's going to go back into our outer loop where we're one, now we're going to increment our i variable by 1. And then once it's gone through all of those, it's going to exit that and pop up a message box that tells us the value that is currently stored in our variables. So i equals that amount and j equals that amount. And then I'll add in a quick return. So now if we run this, 
we should have this variable i, because it's in the outer loop, which is only going to be looped 10 times, it should end up with a value of 10. This j, on the other hand, is on an inner loop, which is running through 10 times, which is also inside of another loop that is running 10 times. So what we should end up with is a value of 100. So in total, we're going to end up with 100 loops. And there we go. We have our i variable with a value of 10 because it's on our outer loop. And the j, because it's an inner, inner loop, it has run through 100 times. <clears throat> Okay, next what we'll do is we will step that up and we will look at how we can actually break out of loops, uh, specifically uh, multiple loops. So for this, we're going to use our old standby of the message box. So before we are, the first thing that's going to happen when we run our program is we're going to pop up a message box that tells us where in our program we are. So this one is just going to say, Mm. What did I have? So it's going to say, the first message box is going to say that it's outside of the loops. As soon as it's done with that, it is going to enter into a loop. And inside of this loop, we're going to pop up our next message box which is going to say that we are in the outer outer loop. As soon as it's done that, it's going to go into our inner loop or our nested loop and it's going to tell us where in our program we are. And then what we want it to do is, because we're in an infinite loop, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we've met some kind of condition. So we have it say, we can test if this variable or this window is open, or if this window is not open, or if the value of this variable is not this, or if the value of this variable is this. So we're going to assume that we did that, because this, this isn't a tutorial on using the if statement, it's a tutorial on how we use nested loops. So I'm going to ignore the fact, <clears throat> and I will do some examples as we go through where we do uh, implement some other conditional logic. But for now, we're going to assume that some condition has been met, and that what we want to happen when that condition is met is we want to exit out of this infinite loop. So the way we do that is we just type in break, and now it'll exit out of our infinite loop back into our outer loop. Once we're back in our outer loop, we're going to pop up another message box that tells us where we are. And then we're going to assume once again that some condition has been met and we want to exit out of our outer loop as well. So we're going to assume that that condition has been met and we just break out of that loop. Once we're back in our main program outside of all of our loops, we're going to pop up our last message box that says back outside of the loops and then we'll add in a return to finish off our program. Okay, so here we go. And as we run through the program, you'll see where in, a, in our program we are. So we're outside of all of the loops. Now it's going to enter into the loop and give us our first inside. So now it's in the outer loop, and then now it's going to encounter this loop and enter into it. It's in the inner loop. We're going to now assume that some condition's been met, and it wants to break out of that loop back into our outer loop. We're back in the outer loop. We're going to assume that some condition has been met, and we want to break out of the last layer of our loops back into our main program. And we're back outside. Okay, so that's it for that. Uh, one last thing is <clears throat> if we have multiple layers, so I can have 
and inside of this loop here I can have another loop and then inside of that loop I can have another loop and another loop and another loop and basically think of like a, a pyramid right so the first the I can have a, a loop over here and then it, that's inside of another loop inside of another loop inside of another loop right so let's say I have a program like that and I want to be able to jump between certain layers of it so let's say let's call this first layer here we'll call it one we'll call this one two and then all the way up to let's say ten now let's say if I want I'm in loop ten and for whatever reason I I want to get back into loop six what I can do is instead of saying break which only breaks me out of the current loop back one step what I can do is after the word break I can type in how many loops I want to jump back so for our example here in the first time we ran it if when we broke here we broke back into our main loop or our outer loop this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip that and we're just gonna jump out of both of those loops back into our program so what we need to do here is we'll just type in two so we break two and instead of getting this message box this time we won't it'll go it'll get this message box this message box this message box and then this one we won't get this one because it skipped it so we'll save that and run it so we have our first message now we're inside of the outer loop now we're in the inner loop and now we sh the next time I press OK it should be back outside of the loops and there you go so that's how we break out of multiple layers uh, this assumes that we want to continue running this same thread so let's say that this is all part of a subroutine and I want to continue using that subroutine let's if I don't want to continue using that subroutine so let's say that would it one of the conditions um, so let's say a condition inside of our loop has been met and one of the conditions does the break function or breaks us out of the loop and the other one it exits out of our subroutine so there's two things we can do we can do a return in here which will exit out of our current uh, subroutine but let's say that I had initially I have a subroutine I run a subroutine and inside of that subroutine it calls up another subroutine so while the first subroutine is running it calls into a second one and then this is inside of that second one if I want to exit both of those subroutines all at once because this one's only going to exit out of the current subroutine if I want to do both of them all I have to do is type exit and that'll take me out of the complete all the subroutines that are currently running okay and I think that's good for the first part I don't want these videos to get too long so I'll break it up into two parts let me see how long I'm at yeah 13 minutes okay so we'll continue on and hopefully I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get through the rest of it in the next part I will see you there be sure to hit that like button to keep these tutorials coming and I'll see you on the next one